Hi, I'm Bianca Coker, and today I'm going to share some insights with you about some of the new standards, specifically 7.6G. <laughs> this standard is interesting that it's in the probability uh, proportionality strand because it's about statistics. So let's take a look. The 7.6 standard says the student applies mathematical process standards to use probability and statistics to describe or solve problems involving proportional relationships. Specifically, the student is expected to solve problems using data represented in bar graphs, dot plots, and circle graphs, including, and this is the proportionality part, part to whole and part to part, comparisons and equivalents. So let's take a look. For example, uh, we might have Charles who surveys his class about the number of pets they have. Here's the data. The zeros represent students who do not have any pets. One, students have one pet, two pets, three, uh, five pets, and one student has ten. I'm hoping they're fish. If we represent that data in a dot plot, it might look something like this. So I'm going to di um, digress a little bit. In the new standards, instead of calling things line plots and strictly having a numerical horizontal axis, now we're generalizing those into dot plots where we have anything at the bottom. It could be numerical or it could be categorical. So in this case, we have numerical, but it could be categorical in any dot plot. I'm going to take a little closer look at that graph. And we see the stacks of dots indicating how many students have a certain number of pets at home. Now, the standard talks about not so much making the graph, but it talks about looking at information in a graph and pulling out that information into comparisons and equivalents for part to part and part to whole. And that's our proportionality piece, right? So in this graph, something we might say is since four students have zero pets and eight students have one pet, then if we do a part to part comparison of the number of students who have one pet to the number of students who have zero pets, we might say it's an 8 to 4 comparison, or 2 to 1 if we simplify. If we want to do a part to whole comparison, then we need to know that there are 16 students in the class, and we can find that out by either counting up our data from the last slide or counting up our dots. And if there are 16 students in the class, then a part to whole comparison might be 8 students have one pet out of the 16 students in the class. So one half of the students have one pet. So do you see our part to part and part to whole comparisons that we pulled out of this graph? Let's look at another graph. Let's look at a bar graph. Now this is a bar graph of the same data. Oh no, I'm sorry, it's not. It's a bar graph of the kinds of pets they have. We have eight students who have cats, and we have 12 students who have dogs, and we have four students who have fish. And so when we look at this kind of graph, we can tell the frequency or the amount by looking at that vertical axis and, of course, our label or our categories on the horizontal axis. And the height of the bar indicates how many. So even if we didn't know what the raw data was, which we haven't seen that, we can pull that information out of the graph. And that's really what we're supposed to be having our students do. They're supposed to be presented with a graph, and then they make those comparisons. So, what is a part-to-part -part comparison we can make? I'm going to go for the easy one. There are four students that have fish, and there are eight students that have cats. So if we compare fish to cats, we have a one-to-two ratio, a part-to-part -part ratio. Now if we were adding up all of, this, all of the number of pets, or all the number of students have pets, in this situation, we add up all of these values represented on the horizontal axis, the heights of all the bars, and we'll have 32 total. So then if I look at the number of dogs out of the total, we'll see 12 out of 32. And that's our relationship, our part to whole relationship. Or we could say 4 out of 32 have fish, or 6 out of 32 are birds, and so on, that part to whole comparison. Let's try one more graph. This is a circle graph. And most teachers, when they teach circle graph, they say it's all about the percentages, which is really true. But remember, a percentage is just a proportion. 
So when we talk about these relationships among the data in our graph, and we don't have those exact numbers anymore because we've lost that when we do our percentages, uh, unless we're told it on the side, the comparisons we might make are about, I'm trying to see my numbers. Okay. <laughs> So about 37% of our students have dogs. About a quarter of our students have cats. Those are our part to whole comparisons, but we can also consider part to part. We can say that about the same number of students have fish as have birds, or we can say about four times as many students have dogs as have reptiles. So we can do still a part-to-part -part comparison, even though we're looking at a circle graph. So what's the moral of this, this standard or this story here today? We really want to not just have students take data and sketch graphs. We want students to be, be presented with data represented in graphs and draw conclusions from that. And this standard says the conclusions they need to be drawing are part-to-part -part and part to whole comparisons and equivalents and they need to be able to use that kind of language to justify their statements. So again in the process standards we're looking at inductive reasoning. We're looking at looking at a situation, making a statement, and justifying it with the knowledge that students have about proportionality. Make sure your students can look at a variety of graphs understand the data that's in them, and draw conclusions and justify those conclusions. Thank you, and have a great day.